everybody! Today we are going to be looking at a scenario where the UK and Germany go to war in 2024. Now quick disclaimer here guys, I need you guys to join the discord down in the comments below, the link is going to be there. I need you guys to join, also like and subscribe, I know you haven't even watched the video, but I just need you to do it. Also guys, before we get into the video, this scenario is not going to be 100% realistic. I mean clearly by looking at this, this is already unrealistic. I mean, the UK and Germany going to war in 2024, of course it's not going to happen. Tea break because I'm running out of breath. <sighs> yeah, so these two countries going to war is very unrealistic, guys. So I'm going to be making up a random scenario. So let's say around maybe 2019 before COVID, British and German relations start going down, and the two countries kind of start hating each other a little bit. The UK doesn't like that Germany is raising its military, they think that Germany is using Russia as an excuse to raise its military, and eventually Germany raises its military to what it is today, which is I think 200,000, something like that, we'll get to, we'll get to the, the statistics later, but it's around 200,000. The UK doesn't like that, so we'll say that maybe some British people were taking a train in Germany, and the German government, or some German spies, assassins, end up killing off those British people, and of course, this news gets over to Britain, and the British, of course, they are furious, of course. And they demand Germany to pay back the families that they uh, killed, and Germany refuses. Now, you guys might be thinking, UK plays, UK plays. Wouldn't NATO get involved? Of course they wouldn't. Listen, listen. You guys need to know this. When two NATO countries go to war, the entire alliance does not activate. The entire alliance's job is to try to de-escalate the situation, and if they cannot do that, they just watch and see who wins. And of course, this situation is not going to de-escalate anytime soon, which leads to this. But also guys, no nuclear bombs are going to be used, just conventional warfare, air force, navy, all that bull crap. So yeah, I think I'm done yapping for now. Let's finally get into the war. So what's the first thing that's gonna happen here? Well, the British want to get naval supremacy. So they attack the German Navy, of course. But the two sides clash and the British Navy clearly has a advantage over the German one. And they end up forcing the Germans to retreat. And after a few weeks, we can see the German Navy in this region almost fully collapsing because the Royal Navy is just better. I can't really show an air map, but the British do have air superiority for now. And they are bombing tons of German factories as well as German infrastructure. And the German Air Force is of course fighting back. But for now, the British are doing a heavy toll on German companies and also infrastructure, all that, which cripples Germany's economy just a little bit. But after a few more weeks of fighting, we can see the British Navy taking over all of Germany's Navy here, taking over, I guess destroying, and gaining naval supremacy over this coastline. Now the British could either force Denmark to give them like canal access, does Germany have the canal? They might, but the British could always just go around. But we'll say if Denmark does control the canal, and they probably do, they let the British pass because they do feel some sympathy for the British because their people did die. This war is justified, of course, so yeah. And the Royal Navy gets let through. Germany's Navy is slowly but surely getting destroyed, as the Royal Navy takes the initiative and starts, of course, destroying it. And eventually, after a few months, we can see the full collapse of the German Navy, and the Royal Navy gaining full naval supremacy over this war. And also blockading Germany, that's also not too good. So what is Britain's next move? Well, their next move is pretty simple. Their next move is to just bomb the freak out of Germany, destroy more of their factories and industrialized areas, until their economy is, of course, crippled. So yeah, the British start massively bombing this area of the Rhineland right here, until a lot of it is, of course, totaled, and the German economy is suffering. Now, does Germany surrender? Of course they don't. Now, the British kind of want something wild. They don't just want Germany to surrender. They want the full collapse of Germany. They want the German... They want Germany as a whole to just dissolve, and that might require the British to make some landings and that is exactly what they're going to do, which is actually pretty risky, I would say. But they do have naval dominance and, of course, air dominance, so it's not as bad as it might be. We see the British making their first landing over here and setting up a base camp. We can also see them making a landing here in northern Germany. This push is going to be kind of towards Berlin because Berlin's, like, right there, so it's not a bad idea. But we can see the British making a third landing right here. Not good for Germany. Now, don't worry, because the German military is ready for this. And we can see them actually pushing out the first invasion, and then almost pushing out the second invasion. But the third one manages to stay. Now, are the British going to give up here? Of course they aren't. I just explained why they want to give up. They want to dissolve Germany. So they make another landing with even more troops, and start a deeper push into Germany, capturing all of their coasts in this region right here. We can see them also managing to connect with their other front lines, and encircling around, I'd say, 10,000 German soldiers which are either forces surrender or die. I don't know why I said die like that, but I did. And now the British have a pretty big front line into Germany. Now Germany here, they're kind of weak. You guys might be thinking maybe France, Italy, or Poland wants to trade with them, but all those countries kind of are feeling sympathy for the British because once again, Germany did kill their people first. So Poland, France, and Italy, and other countries might be a little hesitant to trade with them. So if a crippled economy and also their military not doing so well, 
we can see the British pushing further in. They make another landing on the German North Coast, and capture the entire coastline of Germany. And this is a pretty big front line to hold up. But Germany is, of course, hesitant to up their military this high, because other countries might want to get involved if they do. You see, if Germany makes a military that's like 2 million high, 2 million soldiers, then France and Poland, they might start getting some flashbacks, and they don't really want that. And of course, other countries can join the war. It's not just going to be stapled to just Germany and Britain. After Germany raises its military about 500,000 more, they push back the British in this region right here, cutting off their other front lines, and also pushing them back pretty majorly in this region. And at this point, Germany's military is about 3 million, and the French are going to cry out against this. Bruh. We can see France joined the war because Germany refused to tone down their military, and also because Germany is being very aggressive right now. Maybe a little defensive. And that kind of makes sense, you know, they are getting invaded. But we can see the French also kind of wanting to dissolve Germany, as they see Germany as a threat to mankind. Why do they see Germany as a threat to mankind? I really don't know, but they do. So yeah, now Germany is just fully screwed. As we can see French troops pushing across the border, across Oslo Serene, and into German land. And with Germany having the split of their forces, and with Germany having to split up their forces, we can see the British making an even deeper push into the country, and also the French doing even better. We can see the French pushing up into the Rhineland, we can see the British retaking Germany's coastline, and making it push towards Berlin. Now it's time for a German counteroffensive, and let's see how that goes for Germany. We can see the Germans push back the French all the way back to their border, and them also stopping the push towards Berlin, but they failed to recapture their coastline. That was a pretty weak counteroffensive. We can see the French re-pushing into Germany, and also back up into the Rhineland, and capturing lots of major cities. We can see the British breaking for the front lines, and pushing towards Berlin once again. This time the push going more successfully, as we can see the bloodiest battle of the war happening, which results in almost 100,000 casualties, but it ends up in a British victory as they capture the city. And with that, we can see the downfall of Germany, as they start to lose more and more land. Eventually, we can see French and British forces meeting up, and cutting off a lot of German troops in this area right here, which results in around 200,000 German soldiers being encircled. After a few more months or even years of fighting, we can see Germany finally deciding to surrender. Well, that's a tragic fate for Germany. So, looking at the peace treaty here, let's start off with Denmark. So we can see Denmark gaining this part of Germany right here, now that's kind of the UK giving them some land because they helped them out. So as kind of a thank you, we can see the British ceding over this piece of land that was German over to Denmark. Now does Denmark want this land? Uh, looking over at this blob right here, this is what the British annex, which is basically Hanover but bigger. And the French annex all of this land right here. And these two states right here are British puppets, and these two right here are French puppets. And Bavaria is independent. And we can see the British and French duel occupying Berlin, which will eventually be returned to the puppet right here. But for now, it's divided. And Germany has. They've been dissolved, all right. Now, guys, before you go into my comment section saying, oh, why didn't Germany get any allies? I don't think anybody would want the help Germany, since they kind of started the war. I mean, they did kill all of those uh, British people. Like I said before, the train accident. It was a purposeful German assassination that was made by the government, which is why all of Germany's allies kind of did not want to help them. And also, France joined to help the UK because, well, Germany raised their military, and France did not like that. So yeah, even without the French, this would still be a British victory. If the French didn't join, it would just be a longer war. The British would eventually win. But in this scenario, of course, I had the French join. And yeah, thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Make sure to like and subscribe. And of course, join the Discord down the link below in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Can you see all of me?